All right. This is our weekly forecast uh, analysis on analysis on GU, and we do this every week. Uh, so if you're new here, welcome. If you're watching this video, hey, enjoy it. Welcome and learn from it. And also don't hesitate to join us in coming weeks that we're going to be having this uh, weekly forecast analysis on GDP USD. If you trade GDP USD. Now, uh, coming to the question that uh, you asked on psychology, the question was, how do you stay on a trade until your take profit hit, or at least maximize your profit instead of, you know, just cutting uh, barely little of the of the trades and then just leave the trade like prematurely. I think that's the way I should call it. So it's like it's called premature exit of a trade. Um, such things happen when you are beginning as a trader. You will experience that psychologically. You will experience that. You will like to get off trade quickly because you can see profit, especially when you have experienced some major losses. So when you have experience of major losses in the market, you will find yourself try to come out of a trade as soon as you are in blues. All right. That intention, that mind comes up, that, that fear comes up. The, the, the truth is you are afraid of going to see a minus. You don't want to see a red. So you don't want your trade to move to red. So you are not even sure of the direction the market is going at that moment. So there is a lot of fluctuation in your mind. And that is psychological, which is obvious when you are a beginner, you're starting out to trade and you are still developing your psychology. So one of the things that you need to do is to learn to be, uh, learn to be conscious of your trade. That's number one and then learn to focus on your goal. That means have a goal. First, what do you want to achieve by percentage by day on a trade? Or what is your risk to reward ratio as your trading plan? And you have to be intentional about it. Once you know your risk to reward ratio for the trade, you have to be intentional about it, okay? If your risk to reward ratio is one to two, stay with it, or two to one. I don't know how they do it, but it's either, either way, it's either one to two, two to one, depending on the trade, the direction of the market. So you stick with it. If you're starting out and you want to maintain consistency in the market and profitability, then go for, arrow arrow one to one start there just try and maintain consistency and build psychology up of holding on to trades by the time your psychology is able to hold a trade to one to one risk to reward you can increase it to one to 1.5 or one to 1.3 or 0.4 whatever it is but at least go for one to 1.5. And once you can master that and you stay on it for a while, this is not something you do once. And so oh, I hit one to 1.5 now, now, let me move to one to one, one to one, one to one to two. No, you don't do that. You have to master it. See, you let your mind accept that reality that you can hold the trade up to that level. And it takes time. This can be one month practicing that, two months practicing that, three months practicing that. So if you want to really get to build your psychology, remember these, these business, these investment trades that we're doing is for life. You don't need to be in a hurry to get things done overnight. So give yourself quarterly, like target each risk to reward ratio quarterly. Every three, three months, you say, I'm going to trade this risk to reward ratio. One to one, one to one for the next three months to build consistency and profitability. Once you hit that target, move to the next. 
You see, now in the second quarter, I'm going to target 1 to 1.5. Set a goal and hit it the same way until you move to 1 to 1.2. Before long, in two years of your trading experience, beauty, consistency, and profitability, you will discover that you will be targeting, you will not be thinking less than 1 to 1.3 or 1 to 1.2 or 1 to, sorry, 1 to 2, 1 to 3 risk to reward. You will not be thinking less than that because you have moved from one step of reward to another. So it takes time. So it's not a psychological question, but it takes time to master. So I hope you got that. Where is the man? Did you get that? <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. Yeah, that was helpful. Oh, awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. So welcome. This is it. We are about to start looking at the market um, ahead of us for this week. This is week 34. And um, we are looking at uh, GU right here and what we should be expecting on GU. Okay. Now, first of all, I'd like to go uh, look at um, the monthly time frame and see what we have overall. This has been GU market overall since the existence on uh, GDP USD into the market. So we see this move all the way up. Immediately the markets launched, there was a move push up and then massive drop and then consolidation around the zone for Y and another drop and then consolidation again. I hope you can see that. So here we have consolidation and a breakout, all right? Okay, here we are having another the higher time frame, remember. So it's like from one consolidation to another. So even though we can see a massive drop here, all right, we see another massive drop, okay, after this push up. All right, immediately he went up. He didn't even waste time, he started dropping. So that's that. But looking at the market like this, where are we? That's the bigger picture. But on the bigger picture, the market is heading down. Okay, the market is heading down. So where's the river flowing to? The river is flowing down, all right? We can see the river flowing down, but that's not enough. He can't just, okay, now the river is flowing down, so we're gonna be selling this week. It doesn't happen like that. It's not enough. You have to dig deep. So that's why we're here. So let's dig deep, right? Ready? Let's go. Now the market is looking very lovely to see from this angle. We are focusing now right here. That's what we're looking at. Let's focus on that zone. We've been, we've been here for a while. So um, we have several months elapsed. These are monthly candlesticks. Remember that. So even looking at the monthly candlestick, we can see the seller's momentum is huge. It's powerful. So GDP USD has been selling since the beginning of the year. So, but before we conclude on what where the market is going, let's look at a few things here. First, we have here, that the market came to. Let me just do this quickly with a line so you can understand. The market came all the way here in the pandemic section, 2022, uh, 20 March, all right? The market came in the month of March all the way down to 14,200, 1.14,200. That was a huge, huge drop right there. Okay, a huge drop ever since the history of GDP USD. Now, according to what we see, the market came one more time before to this zone, 16,700. 1.16,700 psychological level, the market came there. Wow. Wow, really? 
Yes, it came right there. And before then, we saw that the market came all the way. Before he came down there, he pushed down, pushed up again, touched this zone. But these are just minor issues. So we will not concern ourselves with this at the moment. Okay. All right. Let's leave that for now. Because the market came there, pushed back up the previous month, and then rejected back down. We can see that. All right. But that's not an issue. Let's just leave that for now and focus on this zone where the market came before and where it bounces off. Okay. What do you think might happen next? Even though we are seeing a big, massive candle pushing downward like this, you can see this. These are massive candles pushing, massive, massive, massive candles bearish. We can see a force, massive force downward. <laughs> it just appears that the market will just break through and just be dropping. No, 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 don't be deceived. This market is dynamic. Irrespective of the momentum that you see, the market is still dynamic. Something else can still happen. So we are conscious of that. So what do we do? We take notes of this key zone. The first one is the zone. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go to a lower time frame. Already we can establish that the market is still heading down, but we need to look at the lower time frame to see what the market is doing at this zone, which zone. Yeah, we want to see what the market did here. And also what the market did here before we make any decisions right now. All right, let's look, let's look at that. So we'll go back to work. We'll move a step backward to the 15 minutes. I mean, sorry, I said the 15 minutes. The weekly time frame. <laughs> now look at that. The weekly time frame, if you get closer to that zone, what do you see? Oh, so we need to adjust this now. Right there. Good. So we are on 16,500 right now. 1.16,500 psychological level. That's where we see price came to around that zone. So I will just set it up on 1.16,500. So 1.16,500, that's it. It's done. Correct. So that's the psychological level that the market came to at that time. When was that? That was 2016, October, 2016, the month of October, huge drop. Look at that huge drop. And then at the end of the month, it started pushing back up. Always note that. Look at, at the end of the month, it started pushing back up. Towards the end, it came all the way down. Towards the end of the month, it started pushing back up. Huh. That's a very sensible thing to take with you right now. You don't want to miss that, what I just said. Observe history. History always repeats itself, right? Uh-oh, another one again. Towards the end of the month, the market pushed back up. <laughs> all the way, the market came down, and then all towards the end of the month, it started pushing back up. And this one, it pushes back up massively as a bullish. Wow. Okay. Now. We can see that the market is getting close in this month. It's getting close. It hasn't got here yet. We have today's 28th. We are just a couple of days, few days for the market to hit the zone. And if you look all the way back, we see that there is a free ride, a week. This is a week. Okay, let me show you where the market is. That's the point. Another point I want you to see. Let's see where the market is right now. The market came here. Or presently is right here. Let's take that one. Okay. Now, look at that zone. This is a week that needs to be filled. Because it's filled it before. It could fill it again. This is a week that must be filled before a rejection. And it hasn't filled it yet. Okay, that makes sense. You say, what makes you think is going to fill it? Oh, okay. Let me show you something. 
I wish I can. Oh, I have to go to a lower time frame to show you how this works because these are bigger time frames. You won't get it here. Okay. Do your back test back testing. You see, it happens all the time. Look at this week. Did he fill it up? Yes, he did. You fill it half to this zone and then open up and fill it again a bit, create it another week, and they filled it completely with this. All of this filled this week. If you go to the monthly time frame, you see it. Look at that. Look at this week was filled. And all these two weeks was filled on this month. Filled. So all of this week filled. Why would he do that? I don't know. These were areas that price was rejected before. And eventually came to fill them back. That means the price in this zone were now accepted, even though they were rejected before. This time they were accepted. This, this year, 2020, 22, the market accepted them. All these price were rejected in, in 2020. Now look at. Price came this year and accept, they were all accepted. Look at the inflation of the market today. Look at the country states. Look at the, uh, uh, the, the state of the, of the economy around the world. So no wonder it's coming down. At this time, people scream and say, oh, things are too expensive, take it up. We don't want to. And then it was rejected. People pushed back up and said, okay, now it's too dropped. Let's go back up. And now look at that. But this time they say no. It had to come down. People accepted it. Cost of living, gas, electricity, everything gone up. Inflation, commodities, everything is on high rising. So British pounds is falling. Okay, now, have a take a look at that. Where are we looking at right now? So we are looking at this zone that possibly because the weak rejection started all the way down here. Let me let me show you see it. <laughs> this is interesting. Look at that's the zone. And again, that zone where prices is about one fourteen hundred. That's about fourteen hundred there. I'm gonna put it there so you see. They're yeah, very close. Okay, we will take it up a bit because it is right there okay right that's where it is so 4100 so we have 1.4100 that's the psychological level the price got right there okay okay now that's good but we saw price came down to this level to where price came down here i want you to mark this Price came down here and then rejected back towards the end of the last uh, trading week. I believe last trading days. How would you know? You have to measure from that place to that place. Okay. On a higher time, on a lower time frame. Let me show you. We'll go to 15 minutes. I mean, weekly time frame. This is the whole week of that day of last week. This is the trade. So we knew that that week was going to be a sell because of this candle. We saw this candle here, okay? Of the previous week, we saw this massive move. So we knew this week was going to be a sell. And immediately the market opened up. There was a major push up, a small push up before it dropping. The market always do that. There must be a kind of, on a downtrend, the market will push up a bit and then before going to the actual direction. So if you understood that, that means when the market open on Monday morning and Tuesday, you will see this right, rough ride to the upside. And from a Wednesday or so, Tuesday evening, the market will start dropping until the end of the week. You need to pay attention to that. Okay. Now, let's look at this whole system. Now we see that price came here and touched that zone. Okay. Touched that zone. We still expect a drop. So now, according to what I see on the weekly time frame, I still expect that price may drop to this zone before we find another rejection. So we still expect another about 90 to 100 pips drop 
before any major push up that will happen before that we that before this line that means remember this is the previous zone that price came to where is it quickly 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 right this is the previous zone that price came to hope you can see this now price came here right so that price zone so we expect that price will come down there first and give us action so that could be the first another 100 pips drop from here to here okay because we, we in the previous in the past price rejected at that level in 2016. so i want to pay attention to that because that's the area where price is right now we can't be looking at this zone there's there's no need to be looking here to be looking here there's no need to be looking at these zones price already passed that level or levels so what we're looking at is where price is actually playing around right now this is the zone where price is right now so we are actually looking at this zone to analyze the market so obviously with this bearish drop where this week was filled we could expect more bearish candle we want to see something like this happen so it could be before the end of the month, the market will just drop massively with this candle and then push all the way back up or another month. Or the market will reject from where it is now, <laughs> reject from where it is, push back up, create another week. That can happen because the month is not ended yet. But this is the previous week, actually. So we're looking at the previous week. So this is a previous week. So this weekly time frame. So obviously this candle will close today. It will break out. A new candle will come up. And if that new candle comes up, we're going to have a bearish candle like this. What do you think is going to happen next? When you see this kind of engulfing big bearish candle on the weekly, definitely there's going to be another open candle on top of the zone. There will be a little push up, a rejection kind of the first week. And then what will happen? The market will start dropping down all the way down, heading down, heading down again. So I'm expecting this kind of formation to happen. I'm expecting this kind of formation to happen. But what I'm not going to play around with is these key zones. I don't I want to focus on these key zones this week to see what the market will do around this level. Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, you're on, you're the monthly time frame. Okay. Then I will go to the weekly. Good. Now on the weekly, oh, thank you very much there. So on the weekly, this is the candlestick. So this week, candlestick is already closing. So I'm looking at it now. Oh. If it closed like this, which is okay, nothing wrong with it because we can actually see that it's already created a week at the top. So it's heading down. That means a, re a rejection to the upside was created last week. So now we're looking at, okay, the next candle will decide to open up right on top of this key zone. It's going to open up on top, on top of this zone. And then there will be maybe a push up before it will finally drop remember what we are seeing is structure the market started dropping from here okay so this was the first this was the first lower low lower high but it didn't it didn't, it didn't give us a lower low so we consider this inside bar candle this is an inside bar so that is not counted so the main one will be this, based on what we see. Market came down, created a lower low, lower low, and then pushed back as a pullback, and then started dropping. So the first lower low, a lower high, lower low, lower high. So a lower low has been created. What we should expect is that the market will open up and then creates another lower low, lower high, sorry, another lower high, and then start rejecting to create a lower low market formation structure candlestick behavior 
understanding this will help you prepare for the week. So we're looking at something like this to happen in the trade, like the market will open up, then push up a bit. After that, maybe towards this zone, whichever way, but create a lower low. We are expecting that. And then start creating a week. And that week rejection may get to this zone. So we now have something like a weak rejection there. Okay, something like that will happen. Something like this. We have a weak rejection, something like that. It's not gonna go high because we're looking at lower low. So we have something like that. And then we might have another candle of this nature coming like this. We might have something like this. So that means don't be frightened when you see the candle is pushing up and say, hey, this week is going to be a buy or is a buy week. Don't, don't get confused. What you need to do is that you need to watch out for structures. I'm just laughing because I remember something. <laughs> Listen, walk out your structure. Put a structure there. The only other way you can consider that the market is going to push up and start buying is when this head, this, this zone is got broken. If this zone is not broken, that means 1.1900. Price 1.1900. This zone here. All right? If price doesn't break that above, there is no buy trade. Don't even think it. Don't even think it. So this is exactly what I'm expecting to happen this coming week. This is the candle I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting might happen this coming week. Why is pushing up? Some people will be thinking, oh, if the week passes and break, if this week break above it and then reject, then hardly will you see that. Hardly will you see that. Okay, for instance, look at this trade. Look at this trade. I want to show you something what happened here. You see this trade? A retracement back up created a higher high and on another higher high. You see? So we call this a swing high and then a lower high, a reversal. This was a trade. So this is a pullback strategy or trading a pullback. You want to see this happen before you get into a trade. But the reality is, I'm not even talking about that now, but I want you to see that if it pushes back up, then we are having a pullback. If it break this, it could be a pullback. Then we'll be looking at the overhead structure. You get it? But at this time, we'll be buying it if it's heading that way. First of all, we want to see that the market, let me remove this thing first. We want to see that the market closes because it's going to open. Just watch this candle in a few hours. Another candle will open on the weekly time frame. You need to pay attention to it. This, this weekly time ca candle is already ended. The new week begins tonight. A new candle is popping up. That's what I want you to focus on. The question would be, what would that candle do? Looking at structure, lower, low, lower, low, lower, high, lower, high. Will he automatically create another candle? If the market creates another candle and reject and do this and create equal high, there is no structure broken and reject again before coming down. There's no structure broken. So we don't know what the market would do within this time frame. So what we want to focus on is first, we want to see the market react at this key zone here. If you reject and start pushing up, we have how many pips to cash to the upside. So we'll be targeting this higher high. This higher low, sorry. Or lower high. Lower high, right? We'll be targeting that lower high there. But before we conclude on that, we need to look at the daily time frame. So the daily time frame actually gives us a consolidation zone here before market, you see, consolidated, hit that top and drop to the below. You see? The, the, now, I want you to see this. Pay attention to this candle as well. Look at this candle. Came to touch this zone. Remember? That was the zone we saw on the higher time frame weekly just now or the monthly. This zone here. 
So this was the last drop to the zone. And before pulling back um, within, within that zone, pull back here and came back here. So these are daily time frame. Now look at this. This candle closes right on it. Okay. And we are expecting that the market will drop. So let me put it here. You see, touch is there. That's, a, that's the right position now. So it's clear now to put it right. Look at what the market did. Initially came here, rejected, came back here, pushed to this zone, and then pushed back up. And you see what it's doing? So within this zone and this zone, we can consider it as a zone. So this is not like a different parameter. This is a zone right here that you can see. This is a zone. So whatever price do in that zone, you take advantage of it. Again, this is another zone. Here. Okay, this is another zone. Whatever price do here, we're looking at. You see? So what am I looking at right now? Consolidation zone. So if the market move inside here, I'm going to be trading within what? Within this zone on a lower time frame, which is about 150, 150, 150 pips above, uh, depending. The 150, 150 zone. All right? This is 150, 160 zone. That's within that zone. Not bad. Not bad of a trade if the market choose to. So we are just looking at what possibly will happen. Worst case scenario, a consolidation in this zone. We are looking at the daily now. It's clear now we're seeing it on a daily that that could be a consolidation zone, okay? But we want the market to show us that it's breaking out of this zone, then we can trade from here to this zone, all right? And even take it to this zone. That could be a possible target of 300 pips. If the market break this zone, we should expect it to break this zone again because this is a minor zone. The major zone is right the corner, which is here, 1700. That's 1 1.1700. That's where we are at that zone. But if the market break below 1 1.1700, there's nothing stopping it from coming down to 1.14 or 1500 because the market broke through those zones before. But we are not looking at that at the moment. We're looking at the weekly. This is a long-term trade. If you are looking at all of this move, this is a long-term trade, okay? We're looking at about 400 pips, but that could take one month. That could take one day. That could take two months. That could take three days. That could take five days, depending on how the market move. That you cannot predict. But what I'm seeing now, we want the market to break out of this consolidation before we can look for a downtrend. Now, looking at this, we see that the market is actually consolidating. It did not create a pullback, it consolidated. So this candle that will open next will tell us something, whether another consolidation will happen or a drop is going to happen from there. So we want the candle to break that. So what do I do? I go to the four hour time frame to look at it properly. What is the four hour saying? Well, according to last week, the four hour candle already told us that it was a massive drop, massive bearish candle that engulfed all of this candle that happened. So we still see, we still see that is a massive drop coming. So the sellers are back. So looking at this candle shows us the sellers are back. Look at that engulfing bearish candle all right so all of this candle put together this one is even stronger we have another bearish one here but looking at this week that just passed we see that the sellers are more present than the previous week you see that they are more present than the previous week I'm not talking about this immediate week that just ended. I'm the week after this one. I'm talking about week 30, week 32. We week 32, the market was, the buyers were there trying to push the market. But we saw a lot of drop came here. We pushed the market on, a drop came here, another push up again. So we push up, a drop, push up again, trying to push up. Then it was rejected and then drop. 
And then I tried to push up again. Again, it was rejected and dropped. So they have never been a proper buy trade in the market ever since. So all those push up you were seeing was the buyers trying to get their self off the table, get their self up, and there was no much buyers. We still have much sellers in the market. That's what he's telling you. The sellers are still here. These are different days, different days. This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, oh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All right? These are different days. So last week, this is a trade. A form of consolidation, consolidation. So you can notice that a lot of people didn't trade last week. Why? Because there was so much consolidation in the four-hour time frame already that people were like, what kind of trade is this? I'm not going to trade. But because we understand the market and how it moves, we were able to catch some pips even in this consolidation phase. So that is understood. That shows us that even on the four-hour time frame, there's still a sale coming. The market will still drop. With what we see, the market is still going to come down. We want to see a breakout. <laughs> Pay attention to this. You want to see a break. Now, who can tell me what this chart pattern is on the daily? Who can tell me chart pattern on the chart? Put it on the chart. You know what the chart pattern is on the daily? Who can tell me what this chart pattern is? This is double, uh, double top. What? What? No, 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 no. Do your research. What chart pattern is this? Guys, come on. I'm, not, I'm looking at this whole zone. We have a drop. And then a consolidation in a rectangle, in a triangle box. What's that? That's a descending triangle. Descending triangle. Ah, dun, 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 dun. Come on, guys. Anyway, this is not an educational class. I'm not going to put you there as though you are my mentees. But let me, let me, let me move on. Go and find out what is this. That's part of the assignment for you. I told you guys that. We don't, we don't close even when the market closes, right? <laughs> we still work. We look at the charts and then we work it out. And so, oh, this is what I see. This is what I see. Yes, I can look at the comment section. Now, if, you're, if, you're, if your background is noisy, just, just, just um, unmute yourself, all right? Just unmute yourself. Now, what I see according to this is that I can see this as a whole move. Let me do this whole, this is one move, okay? All right, the market move up, down, move up, down, move up and down, okay? This is a whole move. So what I see here is a bearish rent tangle is a bearish rectangle. A bearish rectangle. Yes, Henry, you got it. Is a bearish rectangle. That means the seller are relaxing. <laughs> they just have a pause. <laughs> and you know, so throughout this week, they use this previous week, they just use it to relax and pause. So even when they pause, the, the buyers thought they are, they are, they are, they are tired. They're no more sellers. They try to push up. Mm, the seller will tell them, no, we, we are just relaxing. You're not going anywhere yet. They try to push up. Mm -mm. The seller say, no, calm down. We are, we are still in the market. We own this market. And they try to push up again. To re Look at what they did with those news that happened. This they try to push up. And then immediately, massive rejection. The seller said, no. We are coming back in. We are in this phase. We are taking it down. And they are back. Look at the way they, they closed the week. Massive bearish candle to tell these buyers, listen, stay back. We are not, we are just relaxing. This is a pause. That means we are continuing. You see that? That's what I see. How many of you agree with me with this? If you are a technical analyst in this, in this group, in this live trade, you agree with me? Is it live trade or live <laughs> Zoom analysis, whatever they call it? You agree with me? Yeah. 
We are all sharing ideas here. Come on, talk to me. Who is a trader here? Yes, okay. yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Good, 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 good. So that's exactly what we're looking for. A breakout. Knowing that the sellers are here. Now, mind you, the buyers might try to force themselves up again. Don't forget. They may try to force themselves up again, but they will be rejected. Now, I want you to see the daily candlestick properly. See the way it formed. Look at it. Look at the way it formed. Did you see what it did? It created a higher high <laughs> and then rejected. So this candle now closes as a lower high. But did it create a lower low? Yes, it did create a lower low. So it created a lower low based on this information here. So this candle is rejecting up, a form of rejection of the zone. So the question is, with this candle, another candle that's coming up, will it push up and create a new higher high? We don't know. If that happens, then we're going to see a push up to this zone before another rejection. So pay attention to that. So the consolidation might continue, even though we have this bearish candle. It might continue, mind you. But we know that it is a seller's market, so there's definitely going to be a drop. So now, how do we expect this massive push-up to happen? It's going to happen by news. They are going to use the fundamental news to do it. We would definitely going to trade. So what I'm saying to you now is, even though the, the sellers are still in a pause, all right, what do we expect this week? There's still going to be a drop. Now, the other time I was with my mentee and I told them that we are going to be selling when I saw this pattern form. That was two, two weeks ago. And I said they should wait for the breakout. I told them, both my VIP members, I told them, wait for breakout. And it happened. We sold last week, last week massively. We were just selling. So now we saw that more said because I told them that the market will come to this low. And indeed, the market did come to this low and touch that low. So we have like equal low now. So it's consolidating. The question will be, will it continue or will it push back up? So the reality is it might continue based on the information we're seeing. The sellers are still present. So this candle may drop and then form a rejection here. So we are looking at a more sell opportunity this week. But we want to see that the market breaks structure. Already it has created a lower low here. That means what we see now is that this low has been taken out by this low. Okay? This low has been taken out by this low. But we still have another low in the future. I mean, in the past that happened, that needs to happen in the future. So we have another low in the past that has not been touched. So that's why we think, I think that the market will still go down. Why? Because the market will want to create a massive lower low or equal low on the general market for any major reversal. Remember, if you check the monthly, we are rounding up now. If you check the monthly, like I said, this is the last time that the market came on the pandemic. In fact, the way the, way the, the whole world is going now, we are in another phase of pandemic. All right? It's, it's called the uh, inflation pandemic or whatever they want uh, to call it. Sir. <laughs> yes. Sir, uh, please, so, sorry for interaction. Um, it seems your chart is different from mine. I'm using um, FXCM. And the last time the market went down was 1985. So I don't know, maybe mine, your chart is different. So I, please check it for me. Uh, FXCM. Oh. Okay. The charts are different. You are using Oanda right now. Okay. But I, I am using F, FXCM. It's for me. Okay, let's see that. Let's see. FXCM, where are you? The same thing. Look at that. It's FSCM now. Is it not your chart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go to the monthly time frame. I am on the Mon monthly time frame now. That's the last one. That's the beat I'm looking at. Yeah. That's it. 
about this. Okay, is this what you're talking about? Yeah, the market yes, did the last side. Uh -huh. That was 1985. So I don't know whether we are going to test that one again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you see that there. But you know what? Is Why is it not here? That's an error on that chart. Trust me. Let, oh, me, check, okay. let me check another one. Yes. That is an error on that chart, too. Okay. 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 It's only Thank that chart that yeah. has that. It's an error there. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. So you 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 either use a pepper stone chart or you use Wanda. Okay, sure. Okay, we well, let's go back to the Wanda we have. So this is what we're looking at um, in this market. Um, hold on, guys. Let me see if I have a good. So this is what we're looking at right now. So now, according to this formation on the weekly time frame, the market will still want to go down. We can see that because this was a drop, a pullback, and another drop continuing. It is not telling up, telling us yet that it's ended, but it might see drop and then before another pullback. Okay, market structure. So now, if we go to the four hour time frame again, we see that there's a massive consolidation. If you go down to the one hour, massive consolidation. But look at it. Look at the one hour time frame on this zone. You can see that the seller game came to this zone and then created a bullish momentum upside and that might reject and start dropping. So now what we want to look at, finally, guys what we want to look at is this we want to see that on this time frame this is what we're looking at so the market may reject create an aw pattern and push up before selling will happen here okay so that's what i'm looking at that may happen so first we'll be looking at this zone next week We'll be looking at how the market is going to behave here. Okay. So we want to see what the market will do here. Sorry. We want to see like the market give us something like this. Okay. Something like this at the bottom. Okay. Okay. So we can only already see that that is happening. All right. We want to see something like that happen at the bottom. That's what we want to see. So again, we are not sure when that is going to happen. So this coming week on Monday, we, de we will decide that. Now, by Monday morning, six o'clock, we'll find out, we'll know. So those of you in the VIP and the mentee group, get ready for that. And we'll be looking at that in the morning, by Monday morning. So that will now decide whether we're going to take the trade to the upside or take the trade to the downside. Now, even though we're looking at taking the trade to the upside from here to that zone, that's about 160 pips. So anything can still give us that, 160 pips to the previous high. That's a lot of pips, all right? And um, that is good. That is good target. And um, that can happen. And it's possible we can have that. So you, but you, somebody is saying, but you just said we are going to be selling. Hey, see, you, say, you, say, you, are, you are not listening to me. Don't you understand we are in the consolidation? We are, even though we are in a sell mode, but the market is consolidating. So the consolidation may happen again, may continue. That's what I'm saying. It may continue until there is a break to the upside, then we know that the market is turning around, or a break to the downside, then we know that we are targeting the zone. If the market break and come to this low, what do you think? It's gonna come all the way down here. That's what we're targeting. So at the moment, it's trapped inside this zone right here. It's trapped. Okay, it's trapped. So that's what we're looking at. If I go down to the 15 minute, what, what formation do we have on the entry candlesticks? Look at the formation we have. The formation we have that we see that the market came all the way down, narrated itself by multiple weak rejection, and then all the way bounces off and then it's pushing up. That may not hold, that may not hold. 
that may not hold. It may not hold. But we will see if it does this. So how would you know that? You say, um, how would you know that the market is going to do that? Well, first of all, your time frame are your friend. Look at the behavior. Every time you go lower, it shows you he's talking to you. <laughs> he's talking to you. Every time you go lower, he's talking to you. He's talking to you. He's talking to you. He said, why would you put a trend like that? Go on, go on, study my trend like course. You'll be fine. I don't need to answer that question. Don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask me that. Why will he put a trend like that? What is he doing? Is is based on what I am seeing. It's based on what I'm seeing. If I put this one here, it's no relevant. Don't you understand? A trend line must be relevant to the current price. This one is not. This is the end of that of the of the this candle here is close today. Is a new candle will pop up. So that is my touch. Second touch. <laughs> you see this guy. Don't worry, you understand it. So I'm waiting for the candle to break and retest. And if it pull back up, that's my trade. So if it does that, I will look at again another opportunity. What is that? I'm going to put another line here. So, hey, what is it doing? Yeah, I'm going to put another line there. It is on this last break, after breaking all of this, and it break this, I know that, yes, I'm going to trade to long. First, I'm targeting this zone. My first take profit will be here. I might consider trade coming here and giving me some kind of reaction here, but this is what I'm looking at. How many of you understand what I just did now? Do you understand what I just did? Did you, did you catch it? I'm expecting the market to break all of this and then retest. Or break this retest here. Okay. And then bounces off from here and break this one. <laughs> if it does, hey, bad old man, the market is in trouble. We will smash all of this. First of all, take profit one, we'll break even, then smash it to the next level, take profit two, and then the last one up there until we sell again. How many of you understood what I just did? You see, that's why you have you have opportunity. For those of you, the offer for the mentorship is still hanging until the end of the month. For those of you, you have 50% drop on the offer. Go and get it now. Come for the, where the fire is burning, trust me. <laughs> we are, that's the only offer right now, the market. So go and get it. Any question, guys? I'm done. I'm done for the week. I'm done. I'm done with my top down analysis. I'm done. Any question? Now, alternatively, somebody will say, what if doesn't market doesn't do that? Yeah, that's why, you know, as, as I do my thing, I will always look at the other alternative, the other side of it. What if the market comes down and reject, pushes up, reject on that level and break this low and started coming down, all right? If the market bounces off here and rejects and start coming down, I'm not gonna get in until the market break this one first and reject or break this one and I reject before I will sell. Now, if I see structure, Guys, listen, if I see structure, I will sell. If I see that the market is creating a lower high, lower high, lower high, I will sell. So I will sell off on this lower high. 
here, even before it breaks it. If it pushes down here, reject, creates another lower high, and it's for me rejection as a pullback, I will get in, I will sell. So no matter what it does here, I will stay in the trade until I take profit here, down there. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I would look at if I was going to sell. So I will look at the trade in such a way that I'm like, oh yes, it's going to short from there. I'm going to short from here or here. So I decide which way I want to go. I can decide to short from here and put my stop loss on the previous lower high and then target this low. As my first take profit and target this low as the overall. And that would be my trade for the sell, which is even better compared to the buy. So I'll be looking at these trades to happen next week. The whole next week, we might have between when it's now and as they, so this one might happen. Otherwise, the market might push up. Listen, the market might push up to this zone, this zone here, and then reject to the downside. And then that is a good sell for me as well. So what I need to do is just to position here and see where the market is pushing. To. If I got, if I have to buy here anyway. I will buy here, take profit one, take profit two. Immediately I see rejection and I will station myself to sell from here. And that will be massive drop. It will break through all of these zones to the downside. Because remember, it's a seller's market. Remember that is a seller's market. Okay, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Any question? Now, if you listen and listen very, very <laughs> attentively, by the 31st, which is on Wednesday, the offer for the mentorship, which is now 100 and what? 100 and what? 94, 95 dollars? Yeah, so. <laughs> from 400 to 194 is a massive offer. So I want you guys to see it as this is the last time we're going to have that. It's not going to happen anytime soon after on the 31st. So if you have not taken the offer, yeah, I know that um, probably next year you might wait for it because this can only happen every year. And I told you why I am doing it. So um Congratulations for those of you who already taking the offer up. I saw a lot of you coming in. And those of you haven't and you are deciding to come in this week before the end of the month, I'm also waiting to congratulate you. And welcome to Where the Fire is Burning. Thank you, guys. And then uh, for those of you watching us on YouTube and then Instagram, wherever you're watching us from, Facebook, you found this video, subscribe. Find us on our Instagram. And our Telegram group, we are there. And then subscribe and join us. Let's make money on Forest um, together. Let's smash the market. Bye for now, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. You're welcome. Odogu. Hi, guys.